These guys got mad, Samson, the other day because Scott Van Pelt, proud Baltimore guy, started SportsCenter on a football Monday with the Orioles. Uh, but to me, the Orioles are amazing as a story for a couple of reasons. We've been making fun of them for 20 years, a once proud franchise. So much so, Stugatz, that the only play I remember from the last 10 years of Orioles baseball before this team was Buck Showalter as the manager coming out and pulling his pitcher before the guy who had hit a home run arrived at third base. Buck was already on the mound <laughs> before the trotter got home. Baltimore's been terrible. And now, David, they're going to be better than the Yankees and the Red Sox for the next 10 years because all of their players are – Young and 20, and their farm <laughs> system is loaded. And I think David disagrees. I mean, come on. The, Yan years? the Yankees and Yankees. Red Sox have proven that they'll spend whatever it takes to come at Samson, some of Samson, they've got the advantage so the of all of their young players. Just explain to us how loaded this team is and is about to be. They are absolutely loaded, but 10 years from now, they'll all be four years into free agency. They'll so all be Yankees. You were doing great until you said David, 10 years. David, they're bringing up guys now that are better than the guys they have. Like, that, this team is it, this team is overwhelming. The Orioles are that strong. They, it might take them a couple of years to learn it, but this team is going to be good for the next five years. Oh, okay, now we're down to five. Okay, whatever. It never works <laughs> out that way, though. Like, everybody always doesn't. thinks that this team is going to – like, you win one championship where you go on a run, and it's like, oh, they're going to dominate forever. And, and just – they rarely do. The Dodgers. They can all get no, hurt. My, po my point is, if you've got young, cheap guys, you can compete in that sport, even if you don't have money, is my point. But eventually they get expensive. So we had a bunch of young, cheap guys, and we were able to compete, win, got a World Series, but then they get more expensive, and you let them go because you have no choice. The Orioles are in a position where they don't have the revenue that the Red Sox and Yankees have and never will by definition. So over the long run, being a Yankee fan or Red Sox fan is going to be better. Not this year, but over the long run, it will always be better. What I love is that people aren't paying attention to Baltimore. They may end up with the best record in all of baseball. They're that close to Atlanta right now, which is unbelievable. And they're being managed by someone who I hope friends of the show know. Have you ever had Brandon Hyde on your show? No. He was a Marlins coach for many, many years. We had him forever. And he became the manager of the Orioles and he has stuck there. He has not been fired through the rebuild. They took a step forward last year, won 83 games maybe. And now this year they are likely going to win 100 games. And what's impressive is the fact that they had discipline that they were never able to have when Peter Angelos was not, he's not dead, but he's not alive. He's not really operating Makes the sense. team. Yeah. It's his son's operating Wait the team. Wait a minute, what is that? What, he's in purgatory? He's a zombie. Right. He's, a, he's, he's, uh, he's sort of one step ahead of Bernie, and that's it. So he's not even the control person of that team anymore. It's his sons. This is the team that had all those issues this season when the sons were suing each other, and then John Angelos, who's the control person, came out and said, I'm going to open our financials and show you that we're losing money so we can't keep this team together. He pulled in Huizinga only a few months ago saying, this team won't stay together. And you remember people from Florida in 97 when Huizinga said, we're going to trade everyone even if we win the World Series, which they did and then did. But the exciting thing is that baseball can't market the Orioles and baseball is despondent over that fact. They're excited that a low payroll team is winning. They're upset that no one cares. Mike, why are you making faces at that? Well, why can't they market the Orioles? The Orioles used to be a, a big in the '90s. They used to be a big time rating. In I know the Cal, '80s, Mike. In I, the 80s. I know Cal used to be a part of that, but that's a big media market down there. They can't market the Orioles. Someone new, someone exciting. Can you name five players? Yeah. They're all Austin Hayes. <laughs> they all look like Austin Hayes, and if you ask me to name five, I'll say Rauschman? I'll give you so much information Hayes. on the Rays if you want it, because the Rays are all so great. And, uh, and I think name Chris, five. I think Chris oh, I Sabo? Name, I could do their whole lineup. Really? I can't watch I could Look at you I flexing. Bore, I could bore you to tears oh, really? with uh, so talk about Siri, their center fielder. They still have Marcakis? <laughs> do it! Uh, no, I don't think Chris Davis? anybody wants that. B.J. Surhoff. Uh, I think the Orioles are like the Stepford Wives of baseball. 
but it seems to work and it is working and it is exciting. And if you are the owner of the Yankees or the Red Sox, you are truly despondent beyond repair watching the Orioles and Rays be the dominant players in that division. And that's what leads to firing like Chaim Bloom gets fired. That's what's going to lead to changes with the Yankees because it is so bad to go to an owner's meeting and look at Angelos or look at Stu Sternberg and realize that they're taking revenue sharing money from you and then kicking your ass. But uh, yeah, you mentioned, you, you gave us a revelation that Peter Angelos is not dead, but also not alive, yeah. somewhere in the in-between. Ooh. And Dan mentioned that they're going to be good for 10 years. So if they have young players, when I was growing up and even – Throughout the the twenty teens, the Orioles would still spend dumb money. They they usually had the financial means to at least be accused of being able to keep the guys that'll come up. A- for Angelos, free agency. forgive me on his history. Uh, an asbestos king was very rich at one time. The Orioles mattered. They were spenders. They built what the most modern of parks a million years ago. And since then, they have lost and lost money. And Angelos, what's happened to his money? Because he's not a big player in this division or hasn't been financially, David. And this division is turned upside down. To me, the most fascinating thing about the AL East is that the Yankees and Red Sox aren't actually that bad. They have all the money advantages. They're not that bad this year. What it is, though, is that Toronto, Baltimore, and the Rays are a good deal better and cheaper and getting paid for it. 